Hey guys, I hope you guys are doing well. You guys had a good week, probably a good Valentine's Day weekend if you guys have a Valentine. Um, today's topic is going to be a little different than the usual, probably because I just went to Florida and I want to talk a little bit about traveling. I know Valentine's Day is on Monday, so happy Valentine's Day to all you guys listening um, and I decided to do this episode because I'm sure a lot of people are going to talk about their love lives, their relationships, what Valentine's means to them, or whatever the case may be. But I decided to take a different turn on it because I want to talk about traveling. I want to talk about my tips and tricks when it comes to traveling, the things that I do to get me to go to the places I need to go to and see. So since I don't have a valentine and I love traveling, this is my little Valentine's Day edition to my podcast. And honestly, what really got me going about this episode was the fact that I went to Florida um, and I have to say I spent like about $700, maybe like $750 max for my flight which was round trip, my hotel, and my car rental. So I think that's a pretty good deal. And when it comes to traveling, I know a lot of people have their own tips and tricks on how they do things. So today I'm just going to talk about my own personal ones and how I do things to get me to that place or that hotel or whatever it is. So you guys should know that prior to COVID, your girl was traveling about every four months. There wasn't a beat that was skipped when it came to going overseas. That could be going to Europe or the Caribbean island somewhere, but I it needed to be done. <laughs> Let's just say that. A lot of the times it's because I wanted to and I wanted that mental reset. Now, don't get it twisted. Your girl has not traveled the world, but I've been to a few places and I got a few places under my belt, okay? <laughs> I think traveling is super important to give your mind that reset and your body and just be on vacation mode because I think it's necessary because I feel like at the end of the day, we all get to a point where we are stressed at our jobs or we're burnt out and going away gives you that nice little reset button or the refresh button to like get your shit together again before going back into work the following week or in the following two weeks or whatever the case may be and at least for me my job is very fucking demanding of me and if you guys don't know and never heard my first episode i'm a dental assistant and let me tell you for me personally i think it's a toxic environment that job just because of the stressors that play into effect as a dental assistant and some might disagree if they work in the dental field but then others might agree with me as well And if you do agree with me, it's because you know exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to that like whole field and all the bullshit that comes with it. I will say though, there is a positive in my job and that has to be the leniency that my boss has when it comes to taking time off or anything like that. So essentially, I've gotten to travel to a lot of these places because I was allowed to take the time off that I needed. I go for a week, it could be two weeks, it could be a weekend, you name it, I've probably done it. Your girl has literally gone to Milan for one day, literally one day. (laughs) So I will say that is the positive of my job. There's more because I do love the field, that's probably why I've been in it for a few years now. But there is a lot of toxic traits that go along with it too. I'm sure some of you guys are wondering why do I bother traveling? You could be saving that money. But I'm the type of person that I'd rather be out living my life to the fullest and not have any regrets saying, oh, I didn't get to go there. Oh, I missed that opportunity because I didn't um, have the money or I wanted to save the money. Money comes and money goes. Nothing will ever change about that. And one thing I would hate is for me to just look back and be like, oh shit, I fucking regret not doing that vacation or I regret not, you know, going out and seeing this country or this place just because of money. So people, if you want to travel, I say fucking go for it. You only have one life to live. No one can really stop you unless you're in like a hardship. I understand. But 
don't let money control everything it comes and goes just as easy like i just said before i think traveling is such an amazing experience that could be with your friends your significant other you by yourself and yes by yourself i think when you travel alone it's a game changer and whenever i tell people that i do that they get so like shocked like how could you travel by yourself like are you crazy honestly it is such a great experience that one day i want to talk about it because it's literally something that you probably think you can't do by yourself but honestly you can so back to the topic i do want to get into some tips and tricks that i have for you guys um, that might be able to help you when you book your next vacation or whatever it is and not to mention I'm the type of traveler that likes to put everything in a carry-on I've traveled for two weeks in Europe with just a carry-on and called it a day and anytime I mention to anyone that I travel with a carry-on for long periods of time or whatever the case may be they look at me sideways my cousin who's a flight attendant she does not she's actually a really good packer herself she actually carries like one of those big backpacks and just stuffs everything in there she's like a last minute packer like me and she does really well with it honestly I will say though when I travel and I put my things in a carry-on, I actually organize the clothes. Not organize the clothes, but I fold the clothes the way uh, Mary Kondo does. She has like a show on Netflix on how to organize and things like that. And I just find the way she folds clothes and garments and whatever. She really does them so neat that everything is fine. It's thinner and it's more sleek and you just fit more. Also, I've come to find out those little cubes that they sell that you can like pack in and then like zip it up and it kind of like meshes everything together that's really helpful too but i can't say that it actually fits more but it does work because i've tried them i have them so i think i just have to give them more runs because i've done them like twice or something like that so since folding is one of my tricks i know a lot of people say roll the clothes which is a thing it does work but I feel like if I roll, start rolling clothes, I leave it for the end. So another trick that I have when it comes to traveling is when it comes to shoes. Sneakers that I'm going out walking in and doing all of that, I wear those to the airplane, obviously, you know, through TSA, all of that shit. Um, and then I'll bring like an extra pair of like go out shoes like I don't know white vans that go with everything. I'm pretty logical when it comes to what I'm packing. So when I bring that extra pair of sneakers, what I actually do is I'll take my socks, uh, I'll, you know, put them together and then I'll stuff them in the sneakers. I fit like a good six to ten pair of socks in the vans alone. So if I wanted to bring more socks than that, I definitely could. And it helps because it's like a two in one. The van sneakers like avoid getting like dented or squished or anything like that because the socks are in there filling them up. And obviously the second thing is you get to bring all these pairs of socks and you're not taking up room really like that. So if you want to try it out on your next travel vacation or little getaway, let me know how it works out for you. Another trick that I would recommend actually is when it comes to going overseas or another country, I would definitely try and keep up with the apps and making sure you have cellular service, like call whatever company you use, let them know you're going overseas, or if not, go overseas and get one of the SIM cards as soon as you land. Because trust me, when it comes to being overseas, you want to have some of the things already prepared, like how, how to use the train system, how to get the bus, or whatever the case may be. Honestly, when it comes to having cash, I used to always worry about having their currency as soon as I landed, just so I had something on me. But I've come to learn that it's actually just so much better if you bring a debit card with you that can be used overseas and just take the cash out there. At least on my experience, I love the Capital One 360 card. It literally is amazing. There's no foreign transaction fees. There's no ATM, like ATM fees from Capital One. The only fees you will like come across are the ATM fees from the country's ATM, 
which is nothing crazy or out of the ordinary. And it's great because when I withdraw money or anything like that, I don't get a fine for it or a fee, whatever. Another good one is the um, Charles Schwab, I think it's called. That's a really good one, too, when you're overseas and using a debit card or need to get cash out. They're very convenient to have. The next trick that I'm going to get into is related to photography. That, I will say, if you have an iPhone is what I'm talking about, really, because I don't have an Android, so I don't know the settings for that when you take photos or videos. One thing is change the settings on your camera to 4K for videos. And then the second thing is when you take pictures, put it on raw settings when you do take a picture it seems to be more clear and crisp when you do it that way and i love it both of them are game changer if you have an iphone it really like brightens and it just cleans up images so nice along with videos on 4k and then when it comes to taking pictures of like a monument or a building a cathedral or whatever always put it on like a panorama mode and kind of like turn the camera so panorama usually is like this kind of turn it this way and then go up because it really captures everything and the pictures come out phenomenal because you do get to see the whole monument or building for itself and nothing gets cut off and you're still in the picture as well so i always say that's a plus and guys that are just listening, if you go to my YouTube, you'll see what I mean with the camera. I use my iPhone as an example. So I did want to mention that because I'm just saying this and that way. It doesn't make sense. But if you see the clip on YouTube, you'll understand what I'm saying. Now, my other trick is when booking flights, I never book during a weekend or a Monday. Absolutely not because I come to find out that the prices are usually more. Instead, I'll book on a Tuesday or really early Tuesday mornings like before 7 o'clock or in the afternoon. I've noticed that tickets go up as soon as like 7, 7.30 in the morning hit because let me tell you, I've scanned tickets, look for tickets up and down. And once the time changes to, I guess, a more reasonable time when everyone's awake and up and going to work, the ticket prices do go up dramatically, at least $100 minimum. And I would say that the best time frame is four to six months. And usually for me personally, I do four months. Sometimes I've pushed it close enough where I'm pushing it like a month before or like three weeks prior. And I'm not going to lie, I've gotten really good deals when I leave it for last minute. And now that's obviously if you want to feel like a risk taker and do that, go ahead. But the best time frame to do it is like four to six months that I've come to realize. I have literally gotten flights to Spain for about $400, $450. And when I tell people that, they always look at me like, how the fuck did you do that? But it's just because, like, I'm a heavy scanner when it comes to flights. I check everything. I'm always on the lookout. And I play around with the dates. That's a big thing, too. Be flexible with your dates because sometimes flights are way cheaper on other dates. So what I end up doing is I play with dates, see what comes out best, and then I put in my request that I'm out. I'm not coming these days. Figure it out. <laughs> and when playing with the flights, like the dates and stuff like that, I always say look at the date coming back, the return date, because sometimes it's a significant difference when you're coming back. Because if you don't play with that, you'll see that it'll be more higher on certain dates coming back opposed to other days. So I would definitely play around with that. So what I use to check my flights, I am a huge fan of Google Flights, a big fan to be honest, because it puts all the flights out on hand. You can filter it how you want. And for me, that's a big deal. Another good one is Hopper. I'm sure a lot of you guys have used that or heard of it. That's really good when it comes to tracking flights or getting a good deal. The only downfall for me personally is that Hopper will 
give you a low price, but it's usually because it's a connecting flight or something like that. And I'm not a big fan of layovers. I am direct, so just take me there. If I'm a direct person, I want a direct flight. That's it. <laughs> so the next thing I want to get into is the tips. And all I want to say is if you're a person who checks in a bag, kudos to you and bless your soul because this girl right here has no patience to wait for the carousel at the end of a flight i want to just go 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 <laughs> so here's a trick when it comes to packing your clothes please be fucking realistic with what you're gonna wear i have to say the first time i've ever traveled to europe or anything like that i was definitely over the top and i'll tell you this much more than half of the clothes that I brought, I didn't even touch. It came back the way it was in my luggage. So what I would recommend is put everything that you think you want to wear out, throw it in your carry-on or your check-in bag or whatever. Throw it in there. Then go take a second look at your outfits. Yes, a second look at your outfits because realistically, you have to sit there and be like, am I really going to wear this or am I not? Because that's what I do. I'll look at my shirts or how many jeans I threw in there and I'll be like, realistically, am I really going to wear this much or am I going to wear this top or am I going to wear these jeans? And if you know those jeans are uncomfortable here when you're home and you don't wear them, you are for sure not wearing them over seas over anywhere or on any vacation i've become more realistic when it comes to my packing i'll have like two jeans and a bunch of leggings and a shit ton of tops because at the end of the day you can mix and match your outfits two jeans because realistically during the day your girl is not wearing jeans most likely i'm gonna be in leggings walking around i'm gonna get sweaty so i'd rather have workout clothes than actual jeans jeans i'll have like for dinner and with the millions of tops that i get to bring it looks like i have a new outfit every time another thing i will say is when you're packing your shoes be realistic are you really gonna wear heels out in italy with cobblestone roads no i think not and if you are kudos to you because that takes a lot actually <laughs> funny story the first time i went to italy by myself with my cousin she brought a pair of wedges with her and we were walking one night to go to a restaurant my poor cousin busted her ass in some heels because she wanted to look cute and when i looked back i'm like oh my god are you okay and she was just like, I'm fine. It's just that the cobblestone roads and these shoes just don't work. So imagine a f***ing pair of nice little inch heels, stilettos, whatever the f*** you like to wear. It's unrealistic. Maybe like those blocky like boots or something like that might work. But no, because that's, that's just not, no, it's not realistic. At least not in my world. Plus, who do we think we are? The Kardashians that we need so many f***. And outfits and shoes and all this like you're about to do 12 outfit changes i think the f not so when it comes to packing i think be realistic by looking at your itinerary if it's a lot of things that you're gonna be out all day walking all day bring workout clothes leggings t-shirts anything that you're comfortable in now with. another tip that i have for you guys in regards to uh, being in the plane is when you first get in your seat adjust the vents at least for me, because I run cold, adjusting the vents really helped me to not get as cold on the plane. And I also avoid window seats because, I mean, as much as I love the window, I get so fucking cold because of the little bit of air that does get through. Also, when you fix the little vents in the top, it helps a lot from get like having germs put on you and getting cold, obviously, because you have to think about it. The air in the plane is just circulating around and around so it's kind of gross and when it comes to picking a flight i do want to say if you are the type of person that will pick a flight with a layover just be mindful of the layover time and always have like a larger window between minimum an hour and a half because you never know what's going to happen in the air. You don't know what time you're actually going to land. You don't know how long you're going to taxi for. You don't know anything. And then the amount of time that it takes to get off the plane, you have to consider all of that. 
And last but not least, when it comes to booking hotels, always try and stay within the city center or look around that area or just about five miles out from it because it really helps and sometimes they're really good prices and you'll be closer to everything where everything is more walkable but other than that that's all i have for you guys i hope you guys enjoyed this episode and i will see you guys next week for another one bye